Welcome for this weekly recap of the blockchain news. I'm Julian, I'm a Web2 developer who transitioned into Web3 since 2017. And if you want to learn how you can do the same as fast as possible, check out this free training. I put the link in the description. Ether was quite stable this week, hovering above the 3300 mark. Transaction fees on Optimism have been reduced, average transaction costs are now cheaper by 30%. The Arbitrum sequencer faced some downtime due to a hardware failure which made the Arbitrum network temporarily unavailable. Binance added support for Arbitrum restrolls. The Infinite Machine DA will be the executive producer for an upcoming movie. OpenDA is building an NFT prediction marketplace. The DeFi market cap rose back to $96 billion after some resistance in the last week. The USDC supply on Ethereum surpassed USDT for the first time. DYDX announced plan to fully decentralize the protocol by the end of 2022. The pull together lawsuit will test whether DeFi really is decentralized. Coinbase acquired FairX, a CFTC regulated derivative exchange in an effort to offer crypto derivatives to customers in the US. The FTS exchange announced a $2 billion fund to invest in crypto startups. Forte Capital acquired blockchain game studio N3T Work. CryptoPunk suffered a sandwich attack and a bot successfully bought a punk for just one way. A bot drained 58 ETH from the WTF liquidity protocol in one minute. The Stobok exchange lost reserve front on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain after the deployer private key was compromised. Open Zeppelin disclosed a vulnerability in their Governor Bravo contract due to a bad ABI encoding. The LuxRare NFT marketplace was launched with features including the ability to place offers on NFT collection. The Mooncats NFT collection was upgraded, now trades, colors and SVGs are on-chain. Pudgy Penguin owners are revolting against Nets Capital acquiring the project for 750 ETH. Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla will start accepting Dogecoin. Bitcoin is said to be legal tender in Tonga by the end of the year. The Ethereum push notification service is now live on the mainnet. A proposed bill in the US will prohibit the Federal Reserve from issuing CBDC directly to individuals. Foundry released a new debugger that allows stepping through a transaction to review opcodes and the memory stack. Tokenfall released Ethereum Data Warehouse, a fully queryable history of the Ethereum blockchain. Hot Hot Marmit is a new plugin that allows to compare gas costs of Solidity snippets. That's it for today. Have a great day.